Good day everyone and welcome to Home Online Math Education. This is a channel where different topics in mathematics are being taught. Now like you can see on the board, I wrote over the mathematics exam questions. On today's video, I just want to do some tutorials on how to achieve the result of some questions a particular student really found difficult solving in the exam. So the person needed my assistance and that's why I made this video. Now, there are some of you who actually have some difficulties in mathematics and you feel that math is actually hard to do, but math is not. So that's why I'm here right now to actually make videos on how to treat the very questions that the person found difficult to solve in the exams. Now, if you know that you also have difficulties in solving math questions, then I'll kindly suggest that you stick around to the end of the video so that you get full understanding on how to actually treat these very questions I'm about to throw to you right now so that you get better in mathematics. In short, just stick to the end of the video. Thank you. Now, welcome back to Home Online Maths Education. Without any further waste of time, it's very important that we commit everything into the hands of God for perfect understanding. So, without any further ado, just join me as I say this prayer. My mind is where I am always. O oh Lord, open my mind to easily assimilate to this lesson to the fullest and help me to become a genius in all my endeavor. So help me God. As easy as that. So, let's just, just drive into it. Now, like you see, these very questions on the screen right now i will kindly suggest that if the question still seems a little bit small for you then try to put your phone in the horizontal form so that the, v the questions will look bigger and you'll be able to see them so we'll be treating these questions on today's video if you think that you know how to answer these questions then you can try them out yourself then after this very video you compare the answers that I have gotten in this video and check that of yours so that you can find out whether what you have done is actually correct. So without any waste of time, let's just drive right into it. Now, the very first question on our list is the number one. We were instructed to express in ordinary form. Now, that means that all the questions under that very statement are in standard form. So we are to express all the standard form in ordinary form. Now, for most of you who are new to my channel, I already made a video on on this very uh, topic, expressing ordinary form to standard form. So, I kindly suggest that you try checking it out after watching today's tutorials, so that you will see the very beginning on how to actually treat questions like this. I also made a very strong intro on this very topic. So you see, to treat this kind of question is very, very easy. So how do you actually go about it? Now, the first question is 11 times 10 exponent 3. Very easy. 11 times 10 exponent 3. Now, man, looking at this 3, this 3 is the exponent itself. So the 3 tells you how many times you are moving. As you can see, we have 3 over there. So that means that when you are going to move your decimal point, you are going to move your decimal point three times. Now, you are shocked. I'm saying decimal points. There is no decimal points anywhere in this very question. But I'm sure you can agree with me that 2 is the same thing as 2.0. Right? So, in this case, we have that over here we have 11 times 10 exponent 3. So, this 11 2 is also known as 11.0. Therefore, if 11.0 is the same as 11, then that means there is a decimal point exactly in front of 11, right? So that means now that since we are told to move our decimal points three times, the next question is where are we moving our decimal points? Now, allow this to guide you. Now, whenever we move this way, we increase. And whenever we move this way, we decrease. In short, you can just call this ID. For most of us who know ID card. So here is our increase and here is decrease. So that means when we are moving this way, we are increasing. Now, let us try this out. We have 11 points. 
Now, if we move this way, this automatically becomes 4. We move again, it becomes 5. We move again, it becomes 6. So, it will never decrease till it becomes 0. Our main target is to make sure that this 3 keeps decreasing till it is now 0. So, that means instead of wasting our time moving this direction, we will move the opposite way. So, at this point now, we have it that it is what? 11 points. So, we we'll we'll just move this way. 1, 2, 3. So, we we'll move 3 times because our index number is 3. Then that means over here we have 0, here 0, and here 0. So, in ordinary form, 11 times 10 exponent 3 is what? 11,000. So, we have just treated the very first question on this. Now, second question. We will follow the exact steps that I have used in solving this, so I'm not going to speak too much grammar. So the very second question is 12.51 times 10 exponent negative 3. So 12.51 times 10 exponent negative 3. So how do we do this? Over here, when we move this way, we are increasing and we know that negative 1 is greater than negative 3. So that means that when we are moving this way now, this will become negative 2. We move again negative 1 until then we have 0. So we have 12.51. We we'll move 1, 2, 3. And then we have it that uh, our 3 is finally gone and we have stopped at 0. So here that we are putting decimal points. We are going to put our 0 here and over here 0. So this is how this works. Whenever you move your decimal point to this direction and then you stop at an, em at an empty spot, then that means that you are going to make sure you place a 0 before the decimal point. So you can just leave it at point zero one two five one, or just leave it at zero one two five one. Please don't ever try this. This is wrong. So our final answer is 0 0.01251. So that's how to actually treat this very question. Now let's move to the next question on our list. We have 9123 times 10 exponent negative 5. Now, if you think you've actually understood now how to solve this question, then I suggest you try out this question yourself by pausing the video before you play it. But then after, that is after you must have tried out the question and you have found out your answer before continuing the video. Now over here, how do we do this? The other one that we treated was negative 3, right? So if we move like this now, we, are, we keep decreasing and that will make it negative 6. We move again, negative 7. We move this way, negative 8. So that means we are not actually going to the right place. That other direction will never take us to zero so we have to move this direction instead so if we move like this we now have negative four we move again we have negative three and over here the index number is telling us negative five so that means we are going to move five times now we shouldn't forget that two is the same as 2.0 so we have it at 9123 is the same as 9123.0 so we move five times one two three four five so we we'll stop over here. This is where our decimal point ends. We we'll place a zero here and here zero. So we have 0 0.09123. And that is it for this very question. Now let us move to the next question on the list. We have it that the last question on that number one is three points. 3.25 times 10 exponent 7. We still follow the exact procedure. You shouldn't forget when we move this way, we are decreasing. And when we move this way, we are what? Increasing. So this is 7, right? When we move this way now, it becomes 8. We move again, it becomes 9. We move again, it becomes 10. We will never arrive at 0. So we rather have to move this way. So from 7 to 6, from 6 to 5. And five to four until we finally stop at zero. Now we shouldn't forget our decimal point is no longer staying here. We can see that this is a very pure decimal number. So three point two five 
Now we are moving this way so that we can arrive at zero, right? So we move one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, since we are stopping here, we are filling these empty spaces with zero. So our final answer becomes three, two, five. We have five zeros. So one, two, three, four, five. So this is thirty-two million five hundred. So that's just it for the very first question. Now let's move to the number two question on our list. Now in this case, we are given indices and the very first question is 2a exponent negative 1 times 3a exponent 2. 2a exponent negative 1 times 3a exponent 2. Now for most of you who have little idea about indices, then I don't think this question will even trouble you at all you see one thing that guides indices is this please try to keep this in mind if possible try to jot down what i'm saying right now so please take note of this according to the laws of indices it states that when multiplying the basis we add the index numbers now um like you heard me say when i was referring to the standard form where i was calling three the index i was calling negative seven I was calling 7 the index, I was calling negative 5 the index. By now, you should be aware of that. So, this now is our index, and this two is our index. So, 2a and 3a are our basis here. So, what we are doing now is we shouldn't forget the law I stated to you some seconds ago that when multiplying the basis, we have to add the index numbers. So, 2 and 3, we multiply it and we get what 6. Now, another thing that is very important that you get note of is whenever the bases are the same then just pick one now we know that 2a and 3a are bases but here is the thing that actually confused some students they end up doing 2a times 3a it doesn't just really work out like that you have to multiply 2 and 3 together those ones are the only ones that are different in this case so 2 times 3 is 6 and then since the a appeared on both sides just pick one so we'll just pick our one and then the next stuff is what since we are multiplying the basis we add so negative one plus two now in this case now we have six a exponents one or some people can just leave it as six a no need adding the one so negative one plus two is going to give you one in case we are trying to ask right now so that's just it for the very first question on the the number two. Now let's move on to the B. We have 10A exponent 8 divided by 5A exponent 6. So what are we going to do to this very question? You don't need to stress yourself. We'll do exactly what we did in the first question. But in this case, this is division sign. So now just down what I'm going to say right now when dividing the basis subtract the exponents very very easy so in this case now we are going to divide right so 10 divided by 5 is 2 you can always do this in your rough sheet for clarity 10 divided by 5 is 2 so we'll come here 10 divided by 5 to put our 2 over here now the a appeared on both sides so we we'll just pick one next step is what the exponents are 8 and 6, so 8 minus 6. Then our final answer becomes 2a exponent 2. And that's it. Very, very easy. Now let's move on to the C of the number 2 question. x exponent 5 times x exponent negative 2. So what are we going to do? We shouldn't forget that according to the laws of indices, when multiplying the basis, add the index numbers so in this case the x appeared on both sides so there is nothing we can just do we just have to pick one of the x so x exponent 5 plus negative 2 now another thing you have to take note of is bracket here the reason why i put a bracket is you know, if i decide to do 5 plus negative 2 this will look somehow so when you bracket this it looks a little bit more mature because the bracket is putting the negative and the two together so now another thing you have to have in mind is 
the bracket there means multiplication so negative times positive will give us negative so we have it now that it is what x exponent 5 minus 2 so x exponent 3 is our final answer so uh, i think the video is already taking too long and i'll be cutting it short from here in case you want to know what the final result will be for number three and four please kindly subscribe and hit the notification bell to join this home online mass education community and help me to share these videos to your friends and families so that they too can also tap from all these that i'm teaching you right now so thank you for your love and your time i'll be seeing you on my next video